Right, good morning everybody. Um, and as I mentioned, we're going to stay with the, with the shark theme. But I'm going to be talking um, a bit about the cage diving industry in a bit more details and some of the novel tools that we can use to try to understand the effect of the cage diving industry and how this might be um, related to its management. I guess before I want to go any further, I just want to also acknowledge my, my co-authors who has been instrumental uh, to this project in terms of providing some of the equipment but also the expertise to analyze some of the data. I also want to emphasize that at the moment this is still a preliminary, the work is still undergoing, uh, work in progress, so I'm only presenting preliminary analysis and that for that reason I'm asking not to do any live tweeting about this because some of the final results might not be exactly the same as what I'm presenting today. So what shark cage diving is an activity that's been increasingly uh, taking place uh, around the world in the last 10 to 20 years, but it actually started in, in South Australia. It started in the 1970s um, in various regions. By the mid-1990s, there were actually five different operators going to various locations in South Australia, including the Neptune Islands, uh, the Pages, or Dangerous Reef. However, by, 2000, by the 2000s, the, the number of operators was reduced to two and they were restricted to go to the Neptune Island only. Interestingly, in the year 2007, something changed and one of the operators changed its model and started to go on daily trip instead of multi-day trips. What this resulta resulted in was the number of days the operators were present at the Neptune Island to change for about 120 days per year to now nearly, or well, back in 2007, to over 300 days of operation. At the same time, in 2009, three of the operators or, or company also wanted to apply for license to operate and undertake cage diving operation at the Neptune Islands. So this resulted in questions about the sustainability of the industry and also to questions about the effect that the cage diving industry might have on white shark. As a result of these changes, two projects came about, and Paul briefly mentioned some of those. One project was led by myself uh, when I was still at Saudi, with the other project led by Barry Bruce at the CSIRO. And what we found is that this change of operation, this increased number of operations at the Neptune Islands, led to changes in the behavior in the spatial use of the sharks. So on the right hand side here, you can see the spatial use of the sharks when there were no boats being present compared to when there were boats. And you can see that the area, that, that core area of the sharks could reduce and you can see the aggregation of points of the position of the sharks which are just in relation to the cage having operator which gets much more concentrated. At the same time, as Paul mentioned as well, the CSRO found that the residency period of this shark at the Neptune Islands also increased. The big question next is why does that matter? Does it really matter if the sharks are spending more time at the Neptune Islands? Does it really matter if these sharks are actually swimming around the boat as opposed to swimming, let's say, around the island or patrolling the island, uh, trying to do some natural behavior such as natural predation? And these videos kind of exemplify this when you can see some difference of behaviors in terms of sharks swimming around or sharks swimming next to the boat. And this kind of led to our questions, to the study objective, which, we, which was to quantify the activity of these wild sharks in relation to the cage diving operations, but also in relation to the natural behavior, to natural predation. So what we're trying to do is to compare the activity of wild sharks according to different, I guess what we call situations. And this comparison that we want to do is to compare the activity of wild sharks when they are the Neptunes compared to when they're outside of the area of the Neptune Islands, but also when the operators are present compared to when the operators were absent. The way we did this, we use a batch bio telemetry tools or bio logging. We actually used what we call here as a 3D accelerometer logger. What it does, it records acceleration in three different axes, as well as the swim speed is a little propeller there, as well as temperature and depth. We also had here a little camera that we are able to use to validate the actual behavior of the sharks and relate that behavior to the measure of activity or to the measure of the acceleration. The way we deploy this, we use a little clamp system that you can see here. As the shark is free swimming and approaching the boat, we can actually deploy this on the dorsal fin of the shark, as you can see there, without the need to capture or to restrain the shark. You can see deployed there. And what happens, they stay with the shark for a predetermined period of time. So be there, after maybe a few days, this will pop up float to the surface, and thanks to the satellite tags and radio tags that we have on this little package, we can recover those loggers and then download all of the data. 
There are a whole bunch of different variables that you can get from these accelerometry packages. However, I'm only going to be talking about three of these variables because of the constraint of time in these 12 minutes that we have for these presentations. The thing I'm going to be talking about is the swimming speed that we have in that little propeller at the front of the accelerometer logger. I'm also going to be talking about trying a measure of activity. And this comes, becomes a bit tricky because, as I mentioned, these tags measure acceleration in three different axes. You've got the obviously forward axis, up and down, and sideways as well. So we use what we call ODBA, which is basically a value that kind of combines the three different axes into one single integrated measure of activity. So when I refer to ODBA, this is basically what we use to measure the activity of the shark, which is based on these three axis acceleration uh, logging data. The other thing we're going to be, I'm going to be talking about is the number of burst events. Uh, which is a third variable that, that we looked at for this presentation. This is an example of how we can visualize some of the data obtained through this accelerometer. accelerometer. Uh, here you've got obviously time. This is an example of a deployment that lasted 22 hours. The red line here is depth going from zero up to 100 meters. This is uh, temperature, swimming speed, and each of the three axes for the accelerometer logger. You can see here a bit of a difference in behavior, and this is why the camera becomes quite handy. Because here you can see how the shark is going to be that that yo-yo vertical migration going up and down to 100 meters, but it's doing something different here. So with the camera, we can actually have a look at what the shark is actually doing. Hopefully this works as well. It took a bit longer to download. Do it again. Should be bigger. Here you go. So you can see that the shark there is actually following the seabed, and that's why it's got that different movement. It's actually following the seabed, following the substrates, and following all the bummies. And this is why we're getting this up and down movement of the shark, which is still at the at, at depth of about 20, 30 meters. So we can now actually look at the acceleration values of these sharks and look at what the shark is actually doing to validate these acceleration values. You can see the shark is actually looking at this little piece of seaweed, investigating it. Not interested. <laughs> Going back down, it's not a seal. All right, what we've done so far, we managed to get 10 deployments. In the video, it looks quite easy to deploy this accelerometer package, but it's actually quite difficult. Sometimes we spend two days trying with only deploying one of them. Uh, the size of the shark that we deploy these packages on range from 2.9 to 3.8 meters. The time, the period of deployment range between uh, 30 minutes, uh, because sometimes these packages fall off prematurely, up to 38 hours. And in total, this gave us 215 hours of data. Just to give you an idea of the frequency of sampling and the amount of data points this, this gave us, this gave us over a billion data points. So there's a lot of analysis taking place. Out of these 215 hours of data, because it is a continuous recording, 80 hours were taken at night, 90 hours of that were when sharks were actually outside of the Neptune Islands, and we know that from the depth that the shark reaches during that period, the vicinity of the Neptune Islands is only between, up to maybe 40 meters. So when the shark reaches 100 meters, we know that it's because it's further away to the Neptune Islands. And we also got 40 hours when the operators, when the sharks were at the Neptune Islands and when the operator were present. Unfortunately, as you can see, we only got five hours when the sharks were at the Neptune and operators were absent. This is, this is a bit of a gap that we hopefully to, we're hoping to address by doing a few more deployments and trying to target periods when the operators aren't uh, at the Neptune Islands. This is one of the four graphs I'm going to show you. I'll just run through it with you so you know what this graph presents. On the uh, y-axis, you basically have each of the variables that are referred to. In this instance, it's swimming speed. With on the uh, x-axis, those situation that I mentioned previously. So here on the right-hand side, you've got periods when the shark was outside the Neptune Island area, whilst on the left-hand side, you've got period of times when the sharks were at the Neptune Islands. This is further divided at times when the operators were absent. But remember, this is only for about five hours' worth of data. And here in the blue box represents when the operator were present. I further divided that into two categories. One, when the operator were present, but the shark wasn't visibly interacting with the cages, with the bait, or with the operators. And periods of time when we could actually see the shark uh, physically interacting with the operator, with the cages, or with the bait. The two different colored bar represent the mean. The black bar represents the mean of swim speed in this instance, with a white bar representing the maximum value for that period of time. So what this first graph really indicates is that if you look at the swimming speed of these sharks in all the various situations, 
there's no real big differences. There's no differences really in the mean swim speed and no real differences in the maximum swim speed apart from maybe this time when it's absent, but remember that we had limited data for that period of time. Now, interestingly, if you start looking at these other variables that I mentioned, you're starting to see maybe a few more trends. So, for example, here, this is odd bar value. This is the black bar, so represent the mean odd bar value, so the mean activity of the shark. You can start seeing some differences between the different uh, situations. And it seems like the shark has a slightly higher mean activity when they were interacting with the operators. However, it's, it's quite variable as well. And you can see that in a situation where the shark is outside, the amount of variability between two different sharks on which we deploy the package. So highly variable. The patterns become more obvious when we start looking at that maximum value of activity. So these are the peak activity value, and you can see straight away that the peak activity is much higher when the cage having operators, when the sharks are interacting with the cage having operators. However, at the same time, that peak activity is the same when these sharks are also outside of the Neptune Island. So naturally, so these sharks are, are having that peak activity in the natural environment outside of Neptune Island as well as, when they, as well as interacting with operators. Another interesting pattern is the number of burst events per hour. So you can see here again that the sharks have this burst event much more frequently when they're interacting with the cage diving operators than when they're not interacting with the cage diving operators or that when the cage diving operators are absent. And whilst there's also some of these burst events uh, um, when they're outside of the Neptune Islands, there still is a big difference compared to when they're interacting with the cage diving operators. So what this tells us, what this provides us, and what this accelerometer package allows us to do is to quantify these differences of activity between those different situations. And we're trying to use as a proxy to quantify, in a way, energy expenditure. Having said that, it doesn't tell us how frequently this situation occurs. So we don't know whether these sharks are actually interacting with the cage having operators for 20% of their time at the Neptune Islands, or are they interacting with the cage having operators for only 1% of their time at the Neptune Islands. We do know from previous studies that there's plenty of times when the sharks are present, the operators are present, but the sharks do not interact with the cage having operators. We also want to um, be able to try to relate this interaction with operators to residency. So, for example, are the sharks that are more likely to interact with the operators also the sharks that reside at the Neptune Island, at the Neptune Island for longer? So is there a link or correlation between residency and the amount of time that they interact at the Neptune Island? Having said that, as I mentioned, we still require more data, more deployments when the operators are absent. We also still want to include some NAR data that we haven't analyzed yet. We also want to include additional variables such as tail bit frequency. We want to also confirm that, that link between activity and energy expenditure. And we can also try to compare some of these increased activity with natural predation. And thanks to some of our data, we actually also have obtained some very strong um, increase of acceleration. This is actually something happening in 10 seconds period. And when you look at the video, this is actually the kind of data or the kind of um, activity that the shark was doing during that period. So you can see the shark swimming there. It's going to see something in the background. It's there. It's going to start accelerating. And what it sees is actually a seal. The resolution of the screen is too slow. If you work, you actually see the shark going for the seal. The seal will breach, and the shark will try to get that seal as well. So we've got some evidence of natural predation that we can, or at least attempted natural predation, that we can uh, compare to the activity of the shark, to the acceleration of the sharks, and compare this activity versus what's happening at the Neptune Islands as well. So I'll just leave it to that. If there's any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them if I have time.